Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Now, we have been uh, going on a really impressive win streak up until this point, which I am very, very thankful for. Now, with all of this said, we have unlocked some challenges for ourselves. And... Um, all of these challenges supposedly are very hard and uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to attempt these but uh, I guess I might as well uh, try uh, just for the sake of it and just to spice things up so let's uh, let's go through this so we have Razakev the Foul-Blooded Trial of Knowledge, uh, Trial of Solidarity, and the Scarab God. There's also Nicol Bola's Planeswalker, which is very hard, but I don't want to attempt that just yet. So which one of these do we, do we want to play? I don't know. And if we fail any of these challenges, will, will our win streak be reset to zero? Because right now it's at 7, so I don't know if that will be reset to 0 or not. I, I'm hoping it will not, but let's see. So let's start with playing against Razakev the Foul Blooder, then see how, where this takes us. Now, the difference between regular duels and um, challenges is that in challenges, I guess you are you have a very specific set of conditions which you have to defeat. Like right now we've got Razakiv the Foul-Blooded which is already summoned and uh, <clears throat> it's an 8 slash 8 creature with flying and trample and with the ability of pay 2 life, sacrifice another creature. Sur search your library for a card and put that card into your hand then shuffle your library. And uh, there's also an, an enchantment on my opponent's side of the field called Grave Betrayal, which has the ability of whenever a creature you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus one plus one counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So this is going to be a really, really nasty one. I will keep my current hand, but uh, goddamn, this is looking really bad. So it's our, so it's my opponent's turn at this point in time. He does not attack me for whatever reason. Let's put down a forest card and let's summon a Willy Bandar. But I do not foresee a lot of good stuff happening. Now we have to tank, but uh, I don't even think we can tank his damage because uh, Razakiev the Foul-Blooded has flying, so Willy Bandar cannot even block him, which is bullshit. So he already did damage to us, a lot of damage, frankly speaking, which I'm not particularly happy about. Let's cast Aggressive Urge on our Willy Bandar. So that we, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn, and it will also allow us to draw a card, which is the effect which I'm more interested in. So we drew a card, which is Ambuscade, which is not really what we need right now, but uh, I'll take it. Sure, why not? So I will attack him with Willy Bandar. This is a really nasty challenge, I'm not going to lie. I do not like this challenge. So he casts Act of Aggression, which is an instant uh, card that has the ability of, uh, of uh, gain control of target creature an opponent co controls until the end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until the end of turn. Okay, so he took control of my Willy Bandar, and he attacks both, of, of, both with my Willy Bandar, and he is Razakev the Foul-Blooded. And I'm already at the point of dying. We finally get a giant spider to be able to to block him with, but sadly we do not have the mana to summon giant spider just yet. 
So the best we can do is summon Resilient Kenra. And give it uh, its own counters to increase its power. But yeah, this is pretty much done. Like, this is just done. We, we just be, we've just been completely fucking trampled. Let's go for a second match. I really, really need something that's a bit better to handle myself with. But this, this really fucking sucks. I'm going first, I guess, which is not the best thing, but sure, why not? He does not attack me in the first turn, for, for whatever reason. Let's summon Resilient Kenra. And Resilient Kenra can uh, give itself plus two, plus two until the end of this turn, which won't really help me. Hey, you know what? Yeah, let's... Ah, uh, no, it has summoning sickness, so it, it, it literally won't help me at all. So he attacks me with Razakiv the Foul Blooded, which is really unfortunate. Let's summon uh, Initiate's Companion. And now let's attack him with our Resilient Kenra. He cast Active Aggression to take my Resilient Kenra from me. I will block my Resilient Kenra with Initiate's Companion. And now Resilient Kenra is under his control. God, this really sucks. Like, this is a very difficult challenge. Like, there's nothing I can do. I don't even have any more forest cards. So I'm literally just out of power. Okay, so our win streak did get reset to zero. That's really unfortunate. Like, the ch and we... That trial got removed from our current... Uh, challenges so that's really unfortunate we still have a bunch of other trials which we can try and because we are still under the 10 minute mark actually no let's let's just do a regular uh duel i don't want to do any more trials not in this video anyway he starts out with such good cards like there's no way i, I can handle myself well enough to defend myself against these attacks like that's just not possible Okay, anything else we can do? Nothing else we can do. He summons Nefcrop Entangler. So we're playing against Gideon Marshall Paragon Field. Nefcrop Entangler is a 2 slash 1 human warrior creature with trample and with the ability of you may exert Nefcrop Entangler as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus 1, plus 2 until the end of turn. That's not that great. Nothing else I can do, so let's move on. He summons an Uncrop Crasher, which is a 3 slash 2 Minotaur Warrior creature with haste, and with the ability of you may exert Uncropped Crasher as it attacks. When you do, target creature can't block this turn, which really sucks. Now we finally have enough mana to summon Giant Spider so that we will be able to defend ourselves. He summons another Uncrop Crasher, but he does not attack us with it. Let's cast Cartouche of Strength on our... Um, on our Giant Spider to, to give it plus one plus one and also allow it to destroy one of his Uncrop Crashers. Which I think is worth it. So let's have it destroy... An Uncrop Crasher. That was worth it. He summons Companion of the Trials, which is a 2 slash 2 bird soldier creature with flying and with the ability of, for one light mana, f uh, white mana and no any other mana, and tap target creature. Activate this ability only if you control a, Gino a Gideon Planeswalker. Okay. Not much else we can do at this point in time outside of defending ourselves, so let's just move on. 
It summons Graceful Cat, which is a 2 slash 2 cat creature with the ability of whenever Graceful Cat attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of turn. Now let's finally summon Sifter Worm, which is a 7 slash 7 worm creature with trample and with the ability of when Sifter Worm's Worm enters the battlefield, scry free, the, which which means that it reveals the top card of your library. Ah, then reveal the top card of your library after you scry free. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Which is quite nice. Let's summon it. So scry free basically means I can look at the top three cards of my library and rearrange them in, in any order I want. I can put the cards at the end of my uh, of my deck, or at I can rearrange it so that they go in a specific order at the beginning of my deck, or at the end of my deck. It doesn't really matter. So the next cards which I will receive is Ambuscade, Aggressive Urge, and Forest. Since I will be healed with the top cards uh, uh, converted mana cost. Uh, with the amount of their converted mana cost, I guess I should really put the maximum converted mana cost that I can in here. Aggressive Urge is not that great, honestly, but I guess I'll keep it in there. Amb Ambuscade has the greatest converted mana cost of 3. Aggressive Urge has a converted mana cost of 2 because it requires 2 mana to cast. So Ambuscade will heal me for free if I leave it at the t as the top card of my deck. So I will do so. So this will give me free extra life. So from 14 I go to 17. Okay, let's uh, let's cast Ambuscade. So that uh, oh no, I don't have any more mana. Never mind. And Sifter Worm has summoning sickness, so I can't even use it to attack my opponent. Okay, let's uh, let's continue on. So he summons Companion of the Trials again, and he also summons Gust Walker, which is a two slash two human wizard creature with the ability of you may exert Gust Walker as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus one plus one and gains flying until the end of turn. That's annoying. Let's summon another Sifter Worm, just because we can. Yeah, let's uh, let's leave Aggressive Verge in as the top card of our deck to get two extra life. Now let's attack him with our Sifter Worm, because it's about time that we do that. So I deal significant damage to him. He summons Gideon, I mean he casts Gideon's Resolve, which is an enchantment card, and which has the ability of uh, when Gideon's Resolve enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card named, named Gideon Martial Paragon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. That's annoying. So all his creatures got plus one, plus one. And he did uh, get a Gideon Martial Paragon from his deck, which I'm assuming he will want to use very soon. Might as well cast Aggressive Urge on uh, uh, Sifter Worm. So then we draw an extra card, which is a forest card, which is quite nice. Now let's cast an ambuscade on our Sifter Worm to have it attack one of his creatures. Which creature do I want to remove? I guess anything with flying, because that's... Actually no, let's remove an Uncrop Crasher, because it's a 4 slash 3 creature and it also has the ability of when it gets exerted, it can allow him to target one of my creatures so, so that that creature, whichever one is targeted, will be un incapable of blocking for that turn, which is a really fucking annoying ability. So might as well destroy his ability to do just that. 
Now let's cast Ambuscade again and use... Yeah, might as well use uh, the Sifter Worm again to destroy uh, one of his creatures. Let's destroy... Uh, one of his flying creatures this time. And now let's just attack him with uh, both of our Sifter Worms so that we kind of force him to block us. Otherwise he will die because... One sifter worms has one of my sifter worm has uh, ten slash eight, and the other has seven slash seven. The ten slash eight of the first one were there due to all the the ambuscades which I cast on on it. So uh, it, it it got plus one plus one counters on it, and that's quite nice. So, uh, yeah, now he's going to block both of my Sifter Worms with Necrop, Entangler, Graceful Cat, and Gustwalker. So let's see how we distribute our damage from our Sifter Worms among his blocking creatures. One of my Sifter Worms get, gets blocked by Necrop, Entangler, and Graceful Cat. Let's... Uh, Let's target Graceful Cat because it has better stats. And then let's go with Necrop Entangler. So Graceful Cat is immediately destroyed. Necrop Entangler is also destroyed. And then everything else since Sifter Worm has trampled uh, it can be distributed directly to my opponent's life points. So let's do that. Sifter Worm, the other Sifter Worm gets blocked by Gust Walker, which is enough to destroy it. And because it has trampled the remaining damage, dam uh, power that it has get, can be distributed to my opponent. So let's do that. So that was enough to mostly wipe out his field. He's only at 4 life now and he finally casts Gideon Marshall Paragon, which starts out with 5 loyalty. Now Gideon Marshall Paragon has the abilities of uh, as free abilities. For plus two loyalty, he can untap all creatures he controls. Those creatures get plus one plus one until the end of turn. For zero loyalty, so the loyalty will remain in unchanged when he uses that ability. Until the end of turn, Gideon Marshall Paragon becomes a 5 slash 5 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. And finally, for minus 10 loyalty, creature you creatures he controls get plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn. Tap all creatures your opponent controls. That's definitely annoying. But I don't think uh, he, he will get to make proper use of Gideon Marshall Paragon's abilities because now we will just attack him with everything we've got with an Alpha Strike. And because he only has 4 life, I don't think he can do anything to defend himself. Yeah, this is enough to destroy him. That was easy. We removed the Trial of Zeal from his uh, deck, which is an enchantment with the ability of when Trial of Zeal enters the battlefield, it deals free damage to target creature or player. When a cartouche enters the battlefield under your control, return Trial of Zeal to its owner's hand. Okay, interesting. Okay, so finally the last match of this video. Let's make proper use of it. I will keep this first hand. My opponent will start because uh, uh, he lost the previous match. He put down a plains card, I'll put down a forest card, not much else we can do, let's move on. He put down a mountain card, I'll put down a forest card, and let's summon Initiate's Companion, which is a free slash one cat creature with the ability of when Initiate's Companion deals combat damage to a player, untap target creature or land. Okay. Now he summons Uncrop Crasher, which is a free slash 2 Minotaur Warrior creature with haste and with the ability of you may exert Uncrop Crasher as it attacks. When you do, tar target creature can't block this turn. Yeah, I hate that ability. Let's summon a uh, Resilient Kenra for now. 
we will use a resilient Kenra's of ability of when resilient Kenra enters the battlefield, you may have target creature get plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is resilient Kenra's power. So since resilient Kenra is 2 slash 2, that X is 2. So we can give plus 2 plus plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn for whichever creature we choose. Let's do that. We finish its companion so that it goes up of 2, 5 slash 3. And with this we can now alpha strike him. So we will attack him with our initiate's companion. And uh, because we we uh, attack him with initiate's companion, we can see if he will try to block it with uncrop crasher or not. I don't think he will try to block our initiate's companion with his uncrop crasher because if he does so, uncrop crasher will die. But so will my initiate's companion, so we, we will see. So he does indeed block my initiate's companion with his uncrop crasher. Initiate's companion will die from this, but so will his uncrop crasher. Now he summons Graceful Cat, which is a 2 slash 2 cat creature with the ability of whenever Graceful Cat attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of turn. Let's summon uh, an, um, a Ronas the Indominatable, which is a 5 slash 5 god creature with the ability with the abilities of Death Touch and Indestructible. Ronas the Indominatable cannot attack or block unless you control another creature with power of 4 or greater. And for 1 green mana and for 2 other mana, uh, Ronas the Indominatable can allow me to... Uh, target another creature so so that it it will get plus two plus zero and also gain trample at the end of turn that's nice let's do so let's summon run as the indominatable we cannot use it to block or attack just yet because we do not yet have a creature with power of four or greater on my side of the field but we will get there sooner or later i just don't know when that will happen now let's attack him with our resilient Kenra and let's see if he will block it with our attack with his graceful cat. He does not block the attack with his graceful cat so he will allow the attack to pass through so he takes damage from that. He summons trial of zeal which will allow him to do free damage to either me or one of my creatures. And he did that damage to my creature, he did, he did that get damage to my resilient Kenra, so now my resilient Kenra was destroyed. That's annoying. And now he will attack me with his graceful cat, and because Ronas the Indominatable cannot, cannot block because I don't have another creature with power of 4 or, or, or greater, I cannot block his attack at all. Now, I need more forest cards, and sadly I don't have them, so let's you instead cast Ambuscade to have our run as the Indominatable attack his graceful cat, and destroy it. And now, because run as the Indominatable cannot attack, there's nothing we can do. So let's just end our turn. He casts Companion of the Trials, which is a 2 slash 2 bird soldier creature with flying and with for one white mana and one other mana, when tap target creature, activate this ability only if you control a Gideon Planeswalker, which he does not at the, just yet. Let's cast Ambuscade again to have our own as the Indominatable destroy his companion of the Trials. That was easy. He summons another Graceful Cat. Uh, I can't do anything because of lack of mana just yet. God, where are my forest cards? Why why do I not have any forest cards in my hand? He casts Gideon's Resolve to which will allow him to search his library for a Gideon Martial Paragon and put it into his hand and also give his graceful cat a plus one plus one. Which is annoying. Finally, we get another forest card, so now we can uh, summon Giant Spider. But because uh, Giant Spider does not have a po power of 4 or greater, we, can, we still cannot use Ronas the Indominatable just yet to attack or to block. 
So now he will attack us with uh, Graceful Cat. Now I can block him with our Giant Spider. To deflect his attack. Or, or wait, no, he... he Wait, what did he just do? Ah, right, Graceful Cat gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn per its uh, card the description. So now it's a force left four creature. If I were to block it with Giant Spider, that Graceful Cat is strong enough to completely destroy my Giant Spider. And my Giant Spider is not strong enough to, to destroy his Graceful Cat, so I will allow this attack to pass through. It summons Gideon Marshall Paragon again. Let's summon Query Howler. So that uh, we finally have a force left, a creature with force left free on our side of the field. <clears throat> and now we can finally attack him with our run as the Indominatable and start dealing damage to him. So he used Gideon Marshall Paragon's. Uh, Zero ability to turn it into a 5 slash 5 creature. Or a 6 slash 6 creature. Why does he have 6 slash 6? It should have been a 5 slash 5 creature. I, I, I don't get that. Is it because of Trial of Zeal? No, is it because of Gideon's resolve that it also gives it plus 2, plus 1, plus 1? If so, that's really useful. He casts... Uh, Hazoret's Favor, which is an enchantment card, which has the ability of at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target creature you control, get plus 2, plus 0, and gain haste until the end of turn. If you do, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So now he will attack me with everything he's got. I have to block him, otherwise I will uh, die. And uh, to be able to block him, I will have to... I, I will block him with both uh, Giant Spider. I will block his Graceful Cat with both my Giant Spider and Query Hauler. And that was really annoying. So now... Uh, now we're at an impasse because we don't have the mana to do anything else yet. We don't have another, like the only, a query howler was destroyed in a previous battle. So now we cannot use Ronan's the Indominatable to attack nor block. So we're at an impasse right now. There's nothing we can do. He, he uses Gideon Marshall Paragon's 5 slash uh, uh, 0 plus 0 ability to turn it into a fire slash 5 human soldier again. He will use this to attack us and uh, yeah, we just we've just been defeated. Like that was annoying. We we were mana screwed because we didn't have enough forest cards at the beginning of the game and that was just pathetic honestly. Let's put down a forest card. Let's put down another forest card. Let's summon Bitter Blade Warrior finally, which is a 2 slash 2 Jackal Warrior creature with the ability of you may exert Bitter Blade Warrior as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus 1 plus 0 and gains death touch until the end of turn. Let's put on another forest card and let's... Uh... Let's just attack him with our Bitter Blade Warrior. And let's also exert our Bitter Blade Warrior so, so that it gets uh, plus one plus zero until the end of turn. He casts an instant which is impeccable timing to deal free damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So he, the, he would normally do enough damage to destroy my Bitter Blade Warrior. But in response to that, I can cast Gift, Gift of Strength to my, on my Bitter Blade Warrior to increase its own uh, stats with plus 3 plus 3 until the end of turn. 
so that uh, the damage that it takes from impeccable timing won't be enough to kill it. That was intense. He casts dev devoted, uh, no, he summons devoted crop mate, which is a free slash two human warrior creature with the ability of you may exert devoted crop mate as it attacks. When you do. Uh, uh, return target creature card with converted mana cost of 2 or less from your graveyard to, to the battlefield. That's... that's annoying. Okay, let's think about this. What do we need to do? We do not have enough mana to do anything else yet, so let's just... Uh, wait, it's his turn right now, so it doesn't really matter. Now we can put down an another forest card and finally summon Prowling Serpopard. Which is a 4 slash 3 cat snake creature with the ability of Prowling Serpopard cannot be countered. Creature spells you control cannot be countered. Let's uh, summon this. Now let's summon a giant spider, which is a 2 slash 4 spider creature with reach. And now let's attack him with our bitter blade warrior by exerting it so that it has death touch and uh, plus 1 plus 0. So it has 3 slash 2 in the end. It's enough to do some damage to him, not a lot but some. Graceful, he summons graceful cat again. Let's summon giant spider again. And now let's attack him uh, with our Prowling Serpopard. Now he will block my Prowling Serpopard with his devoted crop mate. And they will destroy each other. He casts Electrify to, to, to destroy one of my giant spiders. Which is annoying. But we finally have enough mana to summon Colossal Dreadmaw, which is a 6 slash 6 dinosaur creature with Trample. So this is where things get uh, start going in our uh, uh, in our favor because we have a lot of creatures on on our side of the field, and we have complete uh, dominance over the over uh, our side of the field, which is nice. Let's alpha strike him with everything we've got. Let's also ex exert bitter blade warrior. He will block our creatures with his graceful cat. So he will destroy our bitter blade warrior. He summons Gideon's Resolve so that he can search his library for Gideon Marshall Paragon. Which is annoying, but this time we won't allow him to use that card that much. We will summon Query Howler. Yeah, sure, why not? And let's uh, Alpha Strike him with everything that we've got. He is down to one life. I don't think he will be able to survive this. He summons Gideon Marshall Paragon, but it's a bit too little too late. That will not allow him to survive what's incoming right now for him. Let's just uh, alpha strike him and this will be enough to allow us victory. Okay, so we won. That was difficult, but we managed to get to pull a win through. Let's grab a card from the Ammo Cat Booster Pack. So we get uh, three cards. Ooh, four cards, sorry. We get as a reward Honored Crop Captain, which is a 3 slash 2 human warrior creature with the ability of whenever Honored Crop Captain attacks, other attacking creatures get plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn. And it costs uh, 1 white mana and 1 red mana to summon. Not bad. We get uh, a random rare called the Comet slash Memory. The Comet effect costs 1 blue mana and 3 other mana. It's an instant effect and it has the ability of put target spell on or non-land permanent into its owner's library, second from the top. And uh, it's Aftermath effect Memory, which costs uh, 2 blue mana and 4 other mana to cast. And since and it's a sorcery effect, so it can only be cast during my turn. 
and it has the ability of each player shuffles his or her library and graveyard into his or her library, then draws seven cards. Not bad. Then we won a random rare called Hour of Glory, which is a an instant card effect with the with that costs one black mana and three other mana to cast and with the ability of exile target creature if that creature was a god its control its controller reveals his or her hand and exiles all cards from it with the same name as that creature okay and finally we won gideon of the trials which is an ammo kit boost which is a bonus uh, ammo kit booster pack Gideon of the Trials costs 2 white mana and 1 other mana to cast. It's a Planeswalker uh, card that starts out with free loyalty. And it has the ability of plus the abilities of plus 1 loyalty until the end until your next turn prevent all damage target permanent would deal. For 0 loyalty until end of turn Gideon of the Trials becomes a force left 4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn and for and for zero loyalty you get an emblem with as long as you control a gideon planeswalker you cannot lose the game and your opponent cannot win the game that sounds pretty overpowered i will not lie that's pretty nice but anyways, that's it for today's video. Um, yeah, we we have some nice stats over here. But anyway, did, uh, this was a fun game. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to get in touch with me, I have a Mastodon account as well as a Matrix room uh, that you can join. Uh, both of which you can find the details of, of their addresses in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.